Welcome back to Maelstrom. It's been a while. It's been a few years, actually. I used to play this game a lot back in the day. It's just, uh, well, it's a free-to-play um, battle royale. I think still in early access. And while the developer side of things are really good here in terms of how well the game is functioning, how polished it is, it's just really satisfying naval combat. Uh, sh short uh, battle royale rounds that are really fun and addictive and all of that, but the problem is the game has always been suffering in terms of having a small player base. And that's partially down to the, um, to the publisher not really doing a good job with promoting the game, keeping people engaged and all of that, or just getting more people into the game. Because a lot of them, if you start playing this game, you are easily hooked for how many things it does well. But yeah, with a, with a low player base, um, battle royale modes are very hard to, um, yeah, to support. So it's always been suffering on that end. But now we finally have gotten another um, blog post from the developers who have apparently partnered with a new uh, studio in order to make everything come back to life again. So development time is just resuming as if nothing ever happened and they are hopefully going to have another update for us sooner than later. So I'm going to start playing the game again. I want to see the difference between what it is now in the version that it has been left off with and see the changes that we get after this point. But I'll also be re-explaining the game to you guys since it has been a few years and likely a lot of people who watched me back in the day might not even see this anymore or likely some new people might be jumping in. So yeah, I want to talk about the core mechanics and everything, but we'll have to start somewhere and there's so much to talk about. So I think we'll just keep it to the basics right now. Let's just jump into a battle and see how that goes and I can also explain a few things of the game while we are at it. There are a lot of different uh, ships and factions. We have four different factions, humans, orcs, dwarves and undead. And each one has three different ships. A small um, sloop, a mid-sized frigate and then a large battleship. Some of them are a bit more nimble, some of them are more heavily armed, and some of them are just uh, tanks in the sea that somehow still float. So, yeah, that's the basic roster, 12 ships right now, with a lot of different um, uh, aspects to them. I'm gonna stick to the humans first, because those are rather easy and straightforward. The ship that I'm currently using is a frigate, it has broadside cannons and the way the um, combat works is that basically well, you look into the direction you want to shoot in the arrow or the um, trident here is going to appear there which is also slowly recharging to show you guys how full the cannons are at, uh, at this point you can also see that on the left so that's basically my ship that you can see there in the uh, in the schematic I have different uh, armor around the ship, so the different uh, sides have a lot of armor. We have uh, fore armor and aft armor, and whenever one of the sides is completely gone, the, everything regenerates, by the way, sometimes more slowly than, um, than you want. But yeah, if I completely lose armor on one side, then... If I get more hits in on that side, I'll be damaging my hull, and if that goes down, so does the ship. And when it comes to the cannons, they don't have really any auto aim apart from how far they shoot. So the distance is going to be adjusted in accordance to my um, uh, to my target, but. Um, if I don't directly shoot um, at the target, the cannons are not gonna swerve left and right in order to accompany to accommodate for my failure of aiming. So it's really pretty manual in that sense and I also need to make sure to hit with every single cannonball in order to maximize my 
uh, my damage output. If I miss a few, that's going to be less damage to them and yeah, likely going to take longer to get them downed. And there's also firing delay, which you can see not every cannon is firing at the same time and some of the cannonballs might also be going a bit further left and right. Those are all different values in the game that you can actually adjust with um, your crew and everything. But that's likely better left off for later. So in the Battle Royale mode, first up you're always going to encounter one of these tiny ships, which will drop a boon for you. The standard boons will always give you some sort of um, slight of, um, stat increase. More, more firepower, more top speed, a bit more armor depending on the ship. Like that one was a Goblin Raider giving me a bit more firepower over here. And that's always going to be active until the end of the battle. I think the ships that we are going to encounter here right now are all AI. Basically just filling in the, um, uh, the places that would otherwise be occupied by other players. And we are now just trying to sink them. So that's always... It's a bit more... Um, complex than it might seem at first glance. I not only need to take care of um, aiming the cannons correctly, but also, I mean right now it's not really much of a problem, but I also need to make sure that I don't really show them my uh, weaker side too much. If they hit me with one of their board sides, I'd be doing well trying to not uh, show them that side of me again. That's the dwarf ship coming in. And yeah, we just set it on fire. We can also use our captain ability, which is a special attack in this case. And we're just sending out a fire phoenix, which will uh, set it more on fire. Okay, this might be it already. The, the AI ships are pretty weak overall. So that's another reason why we need um, some of our players here because otherwise it's not always that interesting. From what I remember they used to have stronger AI ships but players were um, annoyed by them because they didn't really leave a much of a fighting chance. Or at least a lot of them seem to be a bit overpowered. I think the best way of handling this would likely be a mix of both. Just having some cannon fodder ships, but also maybe one or two um, strong AI ships per battle that can actually give you a good uh, run for your money. Just so that victory isn't always um, guaranteed. There's a, no there's a whole another um, PvE mode that you can take a look at uh, at some point. But yeah, I think for starters it might not be the worst idea. Just going with an all-out AI, AI battle to have a bit more uh, time to explain a few things. Besides very powerful and uh, burning cannonballs, and they are not always on fire for other ships. It's just a little quirk that I have with um, this one. We also have a few other things going for us. You just saw that the enter hooks, which I can also use to just pull in some boons and uh, treasure. I can also use them to enter other ships and start a crew battle. And for that I actually need my crew to be at good health, which you can see in the bottom left, the, the red bar. Currently at 180. And it also has a wide a vertical bar. They're actually um, shots that can damage the crew directly. It's not going to do any more hull damage at that point. But if my crew goes below the red bar, or the silver vertical bar on the, yeah, on the health bar, it's going to affect my damage output. Cannons are not going to be firing anymore, or at least not that quickly anymore, because I'm understaffed and basically the crew inside my ship would be activating one uh, just one cannon and then running to the next one. 
And I just completely missed, oh, missed all of my shots here. And the other thing here, which I can also show you guys, is um, the sail damage. We can actually damage our ship's sails and uh, stop them from being so maneuverable. Which I'm doing now, so that one is going to slow way down. Everything that we can damage can also be regenerated over time. There are values for how much that happens and you can also tune your stuff in order to be a bit less uh, vulnerable to these kind of attacks. But in the end that's another cool thing about the game. A lot of what you can do here is not really just um, rock, paper, scissors. You always have a bit of a toolkit um, along with you. So while your ship might be very good with one thing, very weak with a few other things, you have always more than just a single option or to deal with threats and come out on top. So you gotta utilize that correctly. These guys are fighting amongst themselves, but I might actually just chime in and yeah, help them out getting to the bottom of it. And I mean the bottom of the ocean. I just stole my kill, but yeah, I got him. So yeah, that's one battle done and yeah, that's how the whole thing goes. I think just having short uh, battle rounds is also pretty advantageous for the game because it keeps things flowing. You're not going to lose a lot of progress if you get sunk. You just jump back in and go for the next round. There's also a whole team mode and yeah, right now we are actually on the um, uh, on the quest uh, screen. So basically here we can see all different quests. I just finished the one in the middle up on top here. So I now get another one. I should also switch over to a sloop because I got a quest for sloops right here. And the more I finish, the more I also do the um, daily bonus. Uh, the first one is always going to be 25k uh, gold collected, giving me another 10k, some battle pass anchor which is going to progress the battle pass, and also a chest key. Next one is going to be just uh, completing two of the quests right here, giving me the stuff down here. And if I complete um, five quests uh, per day when I get um, this stuff as well, if I complete everything, I also get 25 gunpowder, which is the premium currency. So this is how you can slowly grind towards different things here. Let's move over to the sloop, which is a long range um, quick ship, but also kind of with less cannons, so you gotta be careful here. I'm using the same captain, so same captain ability, and I... I think it's a bit too early to get in depth about what you can do with the different crewmates and everything here. Just know that there are a lot of different values that you can adjust. You can see the um, summary of everything down here, but if you just look at the cannon, yeah, this is actually um, everything regarding um, our cannons here. The number that we have, the hull and armor damage they do, sail damage, crew damage, Cannon reload speed, critical chance, critical damage, cannonball velocity, cannonball spread, firing delay, and the range. It's a lot. We have the same for hull and armor, which I'm not going to read out now. The same for the crew, and the same for utility, which is a lot to do with strength and just our maneuverability. So let's get back in, let's play some more uh, Battle Royale mode. I think I'll make another episode talking about the um, uh, PvE mode, but for now let's stick to the one that we just uh, saw and go through a few more matches. Maybe we'll come along a few other players because, well, it's gotten a bit more active now. I can also in the meantime, while we wait to connect to a match, just quickly open some of the chests here. 
The chest system is another reward uh, system which will help us uh, leveling, leveling up the captain here. And the booster chest that I open here right now, those are from my battle pass. So if I purchase a battle pass, I also get those. And everything else here needs a few keys in order to open it. And besides the stuff that we get from the dailies, keys also just generate automatically. And I think it's 20 per day or was it 10 per day, something like that. So overall it's a decent amount. Just when I came back and started playing a lot, of course I'm now out of um, keys, but overall it still allows you to get a decent amount of um, stuff done. And yeah, we are back in the, in the pre-lobby, just waiting for a few other people to connect, hopefully. I had a I had a lot of uh, battles with usually one or two other people, so that seems to be happening quite often recently. But there are also some where I just um, am on my own against the AI players. So, yeah. Let us see how that all turns out. Uh, when it comes to the maps, there are currently three different ones available. This one actually has a huge uh, sea monster on it. Only in the actual mode right now in the pre-lobby it's not um, there. But besides that they also come with different environmental hazards and things going on. Like fog banks that hide you from other players that are not inside the fog bank as well. Large um, maelstroms right here. You can use them pretty well to get a bit more speed, but you gotta be careful because in the pre-lobby they are not dangerous, but in the um, in the actual game they are going to just uh, suck you into them and that's going to be the end of you. And also different uh, water currents. You can go against them, but you are going to do so comparatively slowly. If you go with them, you are going to be picking up a lot more speed. So yeah, that can actually help you out uh, quite a bit. But yeah, let's start again and to start out with we have a lot of uh, the small boon ships uh, coming up. So increasing our speed here should be um, helping us out quite a bit. And also a bit of armor for good measure if we can catch back up to that armor galleon which uh, seems to be leaving. Get back here. And I slightly miss. Especially when looking at stuff with uh, long range cannons, you really gotta uh, be careful and um, yeah, aim well in order to hit something. Always lead your shots and yeah, just uh, try to hit, to hit things as best as you can. And yeah, we are currently ever so slightly on fire. It should be alright. Not as much on fire as the other guy. And I don't think they are... Oh, they barely made it. But what a shame it wasn't enough. Just grabbing a bit of a treasure here and let's move on to the next one. And yeah, that was a fail on my end. Yeah, the whole thing about not having... Uh, having auto aim makes things a bit more difficult, but once you really start hitting ships, it just feels so good. Because you know that's, that's something that you did. It's not just the game playing itself for you, it's actually you getting good at the game and hitting the shots that you aim at people and that's just amazing. 
Ideally, I should be uh, staying a bit further away to avoid their shots and with this ship I can also, if I'm really good, just dodge and weave between some of the cannonballs. Another shot incoming and yeah, I managed to get uh, past them. And yeah, against another player this would have been a lot more difficult, but yeah, just against the AI I have a much better uh, chance. I hope that at some point we can also get some um, special ability usage from the AI. I think that would be really amazing. But right now I'm I'm mainly looking forward to seeing what the team does next and how the game is going to go from here. With uh, being a new investor, I'm also a bit wary about the um, direction of the game maybe not being the best from this point on. Because most people of course want a return on investment. And who knows uh, to what lengths you need to go in order to make that happen. But I just hope that the game is going to continue down the right path, which it has been on for the longest time, and yeah, I hope that's going to be enough to make it successful. And I should also mention that my uh, special ability in this ship is, I mean, not just the captain ability, but there's also a special thing for each ship uh, on its own. I have some long range uh, vision which is going to give me the uh, names of different other ships that are close by. Ideally I would like to fight this guy a bit more out in the open. Okay, there's another ship there. Oh. Gotta be careful. And they're not letting that guy get away here. He got a kill, but as per usual, I got him afterwards. So I'm picking up a bit more repair here to hopefully be up and running again before that guy uh, gets me. I mean, this stuff right now isn't even all that um, tough. There are harder things. I can, you can easily run into a battle where you um, <laughs> um, where you really wear yourself down and then the next ship comes in and has a field day with you, so gotta be careful about that. But yeah, we did another battle, we got another few chests and... Yeah, I think that's gonna be it for this video. Or maybe maybe we do another round. See if we can actually get a few more people in, hopefully. Uh, besides that, let me quickly show you guys a bit about the um, uh, crewmates here. So you can have three different crewmates on your ship. You cannot have two of them for the same position. So for example this one is a bosun and basically the bosuns uh, look all the same. We can also have a shipwright. There are also le legendary versions of them and cooks, helmsman, lookout, master gunner, uh, navigator, powder monkey, and I think there have been like one or two more. And yeah, those all buff different aspects of our ship. Like, maybe there are different types of bosons. One of them might be increasing our damage resistance, our armor, or whatever. But I usually go with the ones that actually 
buff our um, repair. Just so that I can get a few repairs in more quickly and then be ready for the next battle a bit easier. I always think like while in the moment the um, ship that goes for um, repairability might just be a bit uh, weaker than the ones that just go for straight up um, strong armor. A ship that uh, repairs a lot is harder to wear down over time. So I think that's what I hope is going to be the right tactic here. Okay, we are back on the map with the monsters, so I might actually try and, uh, try and get that one killed. I'm not entirely sure if I can do it with this ship because it doesn't have that much damage. But it should be alright. Just gotta hope that the, um, uh, the decreasing size of the map doesn't cut me off from the monster too early. It's in the um, east area of the map and that often just gets cut off from the map uh, very quickly. It's also pretty interesting because the stuff that I talked about before, the um, water currents, the maelstrom and everything, they're not always in the same place. There are different variants here, so they move all over the map with a few uh, predetermined uh, placements. And also the way the map shrinks down is a different every time. And from what I've seen, they've also done pretty well with how the map is laid out. So it's not always going, it's never going to trap you in a way. You always need to be sure that you um, leave the um, area that's going to be swallowed up by the blackness uh, soon enough, but it's not going to put you into a position where you don't have any uh, any option to flee anymore. I think that's going to become more of, uh, obvious if we actually run into a situation like that. But it's very well designed and once you notice what the game is doing, it's just adding so much to it. Because it all feels very, um, very well planned out. Okay, we might not actually be going for the monster here. You can see the red skull on the map there. In the bottom right. But we are now surrounded by like two or three other ships, so uh, we might actually have to fight our way out here. Also the dwarf ships are all um, basically steamboats, so they don't use sails and therefore they show me that they are immune, immune to some of the damage. Because my the Phoenix ability is actually mostly against the shields. It has some direct uh, hull damage aspects and that's uh, good against everything. But a ship without sails is not going to be susceptible to sail damage. And yeah, I'm way too close by to that other ship there. The Undeads have been the premium faction for a while, so those are the um, latest ships that have been added years ago. And while I heard that they should be coming, like um, things that you can just regularly purchase without uh, premium currency, right now they are only available as either DLC on Steam or through uh, premium currency inside the game. Uh, there's another guy coming. So you got to be um, uh, saving up for those. But I don't think I paid for a single one of them with regular, uh, with real life money. There's uh, enough avenues for you to get them through in-game means. It just takes a while. Uh, 
Okay, I'm gonna leave the boons behind because I want to go for the sea monster now as I promised. There's another ship over there, but I'm going to ignore it. The sea monster can also kill me, by the way, as you might expect. So I gotta be careful to not get too close because it can actually grab me. So, there it is up there. Hello there. So, gotta keep my distance. I can also try and set it on fire. I think that's doing some damage. To what uh, looks like a floating rock for the most part. Okay, 100 damage isn't really that worthwhile, but then again, I'm not really doing that much damage um, anyways. Okay, gotta get away before it just uh, goes for me. And it has a few thousand health, so gotta keep at it. And oh god, this is close. This is close, this is not good. The snap attack isn't even all that bad. He said and died. And yeah, that was Brian Moore. Got me really good here. Usually it's better to go in with a more high damage output um, ship. Besides that attack, it also has a completely different one, which you might see now in a moment. No, it's just doing that now. Ah, there it is. The, the good old grab and snack. I'm not sure if you can survive that. That one certainly didn't. And yeah, I can now... Just look for our ships and try to follow them, but I can also just go back to the main screen. Get my rewards here, which are likely not going to be that amazing. Of course, yeah, I didn't get that far. There are definitely better ships to um, try and uh, kill Brian more with. Okay, kill battleship as a or sink battleships as a battleship, board enemy ships and collect treasure. I think we might do something more of that in the next episode. But then yeah, we are now getting a lot of um, currency here, including a few keys. So might as well um, spend them. And all of this stuff is really... Oh, there were a few uh, powder barrels, so we got more premium currency. Uh, most of this is really just to level up our captain. I think that's a good thing to take a look at at a later episode. Back in the day when I was more active on the game, the captain leveling came out a while after everything else was established. So it was easier to pick up on the new mechanics while I already knew the rest of the game. Now getting everything at the same time, it's a bit more difficult, but we'll manage. Anyways, that's gonna be it for my end for this episode. Thanks for watching, see you guys next time and till then have a good one, bye bye. And check out the game on Steam, it's free, it's a lot of fun, I really enjoy it again, so... Let's hope for the best for the game. Till next time, bye bye.